Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining the Association of Dundas Church's Advent Walk. Uh, like so much of this year, it's a, a tradition that will look a little bit different. Um, but we hope and pray that it'll be a valuable time and well worth it. Uh, and while it may look different, it still communicates what we're trying to communicate every year. And that is that the churches of Dundas are strong together and united uh, through the love of Jesus and through the love for our community. So thank you for supporting this walk by watching these videos. God bless you. Have a great Christmas. reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and in his, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child will be born holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. How can this be? Many of us have asked this question ourselves since the middle of March. I know I have as the counts grow. Why aren't people with the resources to be as safe as possible using their resources to be as safe as possible. The messages from public health and government are clear. How can this be, Mary asks. A young girl, powerless in the face of her community, is invited to birth the message of good news. And Mary is challenged to share that message with everyone, no keeping her cuddly warm baby to herself. Gabriel brings Mary an invitation, a holy invitation, to participate with God in the life of the world, revealing and transforming and blessing. We might ask ourselves how we would respond if we received the message that we have an opportunity to participate with God in the life of the world. Oh wait, aren't we already part of the equation? Don't we already have an obligation to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves? With Jesus' death on the cross, we receive a holy invitation, a command to participate with God, with Christ, and with the Holy Spirit to transform the life of the world. God encounters us in this story year after year. God challenges us to hear the message with our ears and with our hearts. Christ confronts us to act on the message to help make a difference in people's lives. The Spirit urges us to become messengers ourselves, to tell the story and to share the experience of Christ in the world and in our lives. May we say yes to the ways God, Christ, and the Spirit 
are transforming our lives and making us whole this night and always. Amen. Let us pray. O source of all life, you come among us with grace and simplicity. You challenge us to heed your message to Mary, to transform your world with our actions and our words, and to make a difference in our communities, sharing love and hope. You call on us again and again to enter into this story. Through the Holy Spirit, guide us to say yes to your invitation to participate in the gift of your message with Christ anew each year. We ask this in the name of God, Creator, Word, and Spirit. Amen. Hi, my name is Dwayne Henry and I pastor Life Community Church. I'd like to read a scripture for you as we begin this portion of the Advent Walk, or the virtual Advent Walk, from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 56. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with His arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful, to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Our first candle is lit. Now we light the second candle, which signifies peace, and we do so with thanksgiving to God for giving us his peace through his Son, Jesus Christ. See 
What a beautiful song that is, O Holy Night. And when I think of that song and when I think of this time of year, when I think of the candle of peace, I think of justice. And this has been a year where we have seen justice be at the forefront of our minds and our hearts. But I'm encouraged today to say that when God gave us his only son, Jesus Christ, when he gave us the Prince of Peace, he also gave us justice. There's another scripture in the Bible from the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And I'm going to paraphrase it. But one of the things it says within that scripture is that the government will be upon his shoulders. Who is that talking about? It's talking about Jesus. And Isaiah was looking at a time when Jesus would come into the world and, and he would, the government would be on his shoulders. Now, now in my faith tradition, we, we celebrate Jesus coming as a baby, but we do believe that Jesus will be coming back and the government will be upon his shoulders. When we think of government, we think of a, hopefully we think of uh, uh, organization that is working for the good of the people. When we think of the government of God, we think of justice, we think of impartiality, and we think of fairness. So this year, as we celebrate this virtual Advent together, we think about God giving us his peace through the Prince of Peace, through he who will eventually have the government upon his shoulders, being Jesus Christ. I hope that in some way, shape, or form that you can be encouraged today, and not only today, not only at Christmas, but at every time and every part of the year, that indeed God has met uh, the requirement of justice by giving us his son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we thank you today for the peace that comes through your Son. We thank you for the justice that you have established through him. We thank you that for all who yearn for justice today, that, Lord, there will come a day when we will be satisfied. And yet, even before that day, Lord, you are satisfying us now. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us as we move to our next part in our Advent journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, welcome. The light shines in the darkness when we share compassion. The late Jean Little, Canadian author and poet, years ago wrote a little poem called The Man of the Village. It speaks about compassion shared in Bethlehem. 
The men of the village had no gold to bring, no boxes of spikenard to offer this king, nor could they kneel freely like shepherds who came, out of breath to the manger, their love like a flame. The men of the village stood awkwardly by, sober, respectable, upright, and shy. Yet one sent his wife with a loaf of fresh bread to see the young couple were properly fed. One took the trouble to learn Joseph's trade, give him a small job and see him well paid. Another who scoffed at the shepherd's tales still privately settled the innkeeper's bill. And one man on learning that all had been done for the care and the comfort of God's tiny son, went through the dark byways and sought out some more, latecomers turned from the hostelry door. As many of them as his own house would hold, he bundled in out of the rain and the cold. As he did it unto the least of them, he welcomed the Christ to Bethlehem. The light shines in the darkness when we share compassion. Dorothy is going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Loving and patient God, like Joseph who wanted to do the right thing by Mary, yet struggled with how best to do it, we long for a dream that answers our questions for a vision of what it is you would have us do. We claim the love and guidance you offered Joseph as our own. Like Joseph, who was called by you to marry the woman he loved, despite questions about her situation, may we walk with those we love, even when society judges or questions their morals. Like Joseph, who suffered with Mary when there was no room at the inn, May we take to heart the suffering of those without a home today and walk with them until shelter is found. Like Joseph, who fled with Mary and Jesus to Egypt for refuge, may we recognize the urgency with which some have to leave their homes in our own time and work to find them a safe place. May we advocate for change so that individual refugee stories are viewed with care and expediency. Like Joseph, who taught your son about the world, may we offer our knowledge about life to the children who cross our paths, knowing that our lessons of love and care help younger generations to understand your love. Like Joseph, who with Mary felt the anger and sadness caused by others' hatred of their child, may we find ways to show support and love to those who experience hatred today. Most gracious God, by opening Joseph's mind, you opened him to offering compassion to Mary and Jesus. Help us to feel compassion for your people and your creation. Help us to put aside our concerns of judgment, economics, fear, and insecurity in order to do your will in our time and place. We humbly ask all of this in the name of Jesus, your beloved child. Amen. Welcome to the portion of this year's Advent Walk offered by Dundas Baptist Church and Ellen Osler Home. We invite you now to consider with us the shepherds watching their flocks as they encounter the generosity of God in the gift of the Messiah and their generosity in telling everyone what they had seen. But first, let us light the candles representing the angels
and Mary. And the innkeeper is the third candle. We come to share together to celebrate the God who calls lowly shepherds to see the Messiah. The Lord our God is our strength and song, and is even now our salvation. We come to share together to celebrate with all the world this good news of great joy. With joy we gather around God's fountain of grace to be refreshed and renewed. We light this candle. To celebrate with joy the Lord our God's eternal presence. We celebrate with the shepherds on that holy night, thanking the Lord our mighty God. Praise God's holy name. Amen. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, Peace to those whom his favor rests. As the shepherds settled in for the night shift, all of a sudden their eyes hurt with a bright light. Disbelief, confusion, fear quickly registered as the angel spoke to them. They didn't think God spoke to normal people like them, but he does. They didn't understand exactly what the angel was calling them to. They didn't have to. God's generosity shines through as he calls as the call goes out, today in the town of David, the Messiah is born. The shepherds listen in awe and they respond. They leave and travel to see this Messiah in the town of David. They hurry along. They still don't understand, but they see the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Emmanuel, for God has spoken to normal people like them. As they walk, they are awash in joy 
in wonder, in faith. Like sheep, they go to meet the Good Shepherd. Their hope burns brightly. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen them, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to the Lord. Speaking about generosity over Christmas is pretty easy. Now, there's lots of times that we're generous. Uh, we're generous and we give presents. We're generous and we get the presents that we don't necessarily like. Uh, we're generous when we provide food and spend time with our family and friends. Now, we can be generous when we give gifts to people who wouldn't have a Christmas otherwise. Uh, we are generous if maybe we prepare a meal for people who, who are struggling to find food. Now, there's a number of ways to be generous. Now, but you throw in the shepherds, and generosity gets a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? Um, all they do is watch sheep. They don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of stuff. Uh, they are called to go and see this child, the Messiah. Uh, and they, they obediently follow the call, but they don't have gifts to bring. A little later, the wise men show up. Uh, and they bring the gold, the frankincense, the myrrh. They bring gifts, valuable things. The shepherds just bring themselves. Um, but I think there is a real spirit of Christmas uh, as, we, as we turn to this passage. Not, well, there is in the way they interact with the child, but our focus is going to be on as they leave. Uh, I'm going to read for you again chapter 2, verse 16. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Now, we sometimes get stuck in the trappings of Christmas, don't we? We get stuck in the gifts and the giving and the spending time with people. Um, and certainly this year, we're looking at a Christmas that is probably different from what we expected uh, last Christmas, and certainly different from what most of us would have hoped for. But we still have this gift that the shepherds have, and that is as they're leaving from seeing the Messiah, they tell other people what they'd seen. Do they understand it? Absolutely not. Uh, are they in awe of it? Absolutely they are. And they share this good news of great joy, such as they understand it. I'm sure if people ask questions, they wouldn't have all the answers, or maybe even any of the answers. But everybody who heard it was amazed. And this Christmas, I hope and I pray that each of us will spread that good news of great joy, that peace is coming on all of God's people. All the people who seek after God will find peace and joy. And that is truly amazing news this Christmas. And so I hope that as we celebrate the season, that we'll remember these shepherds and the generosity, not of gifts and food, but of the message of joy and peace that they have. Let us pray together. Lord, I thank you so much um, for your generosity to us. As you call the likes of these shepherds and and us gathered around our screens, uh, far from perfect, relatively normal people uh, who, who just seek your face. Uh, thank you for that call on our lives and for each person that listens to that call and inspects and goes and sees the Messiah, uh, whether physically in the case of the shepherds or through your word or through community, such as we're able to have right now. Lord, we pray that as we celebrate this Christmas season, we will be generous with the story that causes amazement and wonder of Christ who came to us as a child to redeem us, to call us to be your children as well. Thank you for your generosity to us. In Jesus' name, amen. We have lit the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love 
in anticipation of the coming Christ. In our last reflection, we will focus on the Christ child coming to live and dwell among us, bringing hope to the world in need of the long-awaited Savior. As we ready ourselves to light the Christ candle, we hear, Jesus has arrived in grace and mystery, renewing faded hopes and announcing peace to a weary world. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Jesus comes to us in power and glory, inspiring joy and calling us to live lives that are full of God's love. Jesus, the light of the world, is born. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our lives. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our world. God is with us. We now light the Christ candle. The passage of scripture that I've chosen for this reflection is not a traditional Advent or Christmas text. I chose it because it speaks to the hope that we know in and through Jesus Christ, the Christ child whose birth we anticipate, the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world. The two verses are found in Hebrews 6 and 10, and they read like this. We have this hope a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, that is Jesus. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. Whether we realize it or not, all of us need to have hope. We to have some purpose and to have a reason to do what we do, to find joy in the present, and to look forward with expectation to the future. We need this each and every day of our lives. We especially need to experience hope at this time in our collective, li collective lives, as we are in the midst of an incredibly challenging and unpredictable times, surrounded by the pandemic and disturbing events of systemic racism, violence, and brokenness, along with environmental uncertainties. In simple terms, hope in the book of Hebrews is pictured as a cord attached to an anchor, an anchor of the soul, our very being. We all know that a, an anchor keeps something from drifting and it holds the object in place, steady and steadfast. In this case, the anchor that is spoken of is Jesus securely attached to the throne of God, yet present and living among us. Hope, the anchor of our soul, is firmly connected to the God of love and grace, the God who keeps his promises through Jesus, the one whose birth we celebrate, Emmanuel, God is with us. And when we rest and remain in God's promises, revealed in and through Jesus, we know hope. I'm reminded of that song, Will Your Anchor Hold? And in the song, it, it asks if in the storms of life, when the strong tides lift and the cable strain, when the surges rave, rave and the wild winds blow, will your anchor hold? And then it affirms, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. First Peter speaks about hope in Christ in this way. God, by his great mercy, has given us a new birth in a living hope. Yes, a living hope, made known, made possible, real, secured by Jesus, the hope of all hopes, whose birth we anticipate and celebrate. 
Redeemer, and hope of this world. May we, during this season of Advent, as we celebrate Jesus' birth, take hold of Jesus' hope. If we've let go, and if we're already holding on, then hold fast to the hope of the life-giving, steadfast hope of Jesus Christ, without wavering, because Emmanuel, the promised one, has come to live among us, ever faithful, always present. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, as we journey through Advent and celebrate this Christmas, transform our hearts and our lives so that your good news is not an old story, but a fresh truth lived out every day through the power and hope of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in the singing of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, a song that gives voice to the hope that we know in Christ. On behalf of the Association of Dundas Churches, I want to convey that we are so delighted that you have been a part of this virtual Advent worship service. We are grateful for the technology that is allowing us to meet this way so that we might celebrate together the coming of the Christ child. We give thanks that we are united in Christ, one in the Spirit. Amen. Let us hear our benediction. May the blessing of God's light be upon you, light without and light within. May the presence of God enfold and comfort you. May Jesus Christ, who by coming to be with us and among us, has filled our world with grace, truth, light, and hope for today and all our tomorrows. May he give you peace this day. May the Holy Spirit fill you with comfort and healing, both now and forevermore. Go with the peace of Christ. Amen.